evening, dear Lord, as we um, come and digest your word. Lord, forgive us for any transgressions we've committed against you and other people. And Lord, as we depart tomorrow to another working week or another school week, I pray that we could be the light that shines your sun towards the other people in this world. Just we pray, dear Lord, in your name, Christ Jesus. Amen. So, today we're going to talk about purpose. Um, for people who don't know me personally, um, I'm a psychiatric clinician at Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital, specifically in the um, emergency department. We see about 400,000 Australians every, every year, just with this small alleyway with only four beds, and we stuff it with about 14 people every two hours or so, so we're at capacity every single time. Now, Brisbane has a populace of about 2 million people, so that's about 23 to 24% of the population that has a psycho, psychological illness. Oh, no worries. So that's about 23 to 24% of Australians who actually not really take the initiative. Sometimes the police bring them in, but a good amount that actually show up to the hospital. If that's about 23 to 24% of people, imagine the others that actually don't go in there and still have an ongoing chronic um, mental illness. Um, now, in relation with purpose, a lot of these individuals that um, I do assessments on have one big thing in common and is not having that purpose. Um, they always, the most common thing I hear is that they're missing something or there's like a hole that they need to fill. Of course, not being one with the Lord might be a bit too real for the kids, but they substitute it for worldly lusts, you know, alcohol, um, a partner, all these substance abuse, anything that you can think of just to fill that hole. But with its worldliness, it's, it's inconsistent. It, you know, it goes away. Just like what Pastor said before, if money can talk, it would only, it'd only say goodbye. In relation to that, I'd like to ask everyone here, do you have a purpose? Jesus is our purpose. Uh, let's flick over to Hebrews 6, verses 17 to 19. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew up unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. So, pretty much, is the Lord your anchor? You know, we talk about it a lot um, to lean on God rather than our, you know, our own fears, because commonly when it comes to things that we're afraid of, the first thing we do is, what do I do? What you should do is lean on God. He's always there for you. Unlike worldly desires who are, that are temporary, they go away. Um, that's why we have a big problem here in, in just in Australia in general with a lot of these drugs is because it's not something that could be filled. But... God has given us a gift to fill that hole, and that's Jesus Christ, the eternity that we all look forward to and believe in, and of the fulfillment of the soul. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a little, you know, just having a wholesome life. I mean, there's a lot of things that may have set these individuals back, socioeconomically, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if they could just lean on God, including everybody <laughs> here, there's that sense of, you know, fulfillment. Um, there's a lot of things in life, especially for me during study, where I just worried. I couldn't sleep at night. I had exams that would decide whether I'd become a practitioner or not. And I told my mother, what do I do? And my mom was pretty much like, you're thinking too much. You know, take, it back, you know, take a step back a little bit. What is the one big thing that I have taught you since coming here? And it's to trust God, what he's done for us what he'll always do for us, and that he's always there for us. He's consistent. So to put it all in all, 
we got to have Jesus Christ as our anchor. And relying on worldly things will corrupt the soul, corrupt the mind. It may start off as a small thing. Like Pastor said before, there's a gentleman who won the lotto. You know, there's a, that's a lot of money, but it's probably the worst thing that has ever happened to him. And it's probably gone by now. And he's probably worse than where he was before winning that pretty much gamble. An example of worldly desires corrupting you is uh, Ephesians 4, chapter 12. Ephesians 4, verses 20 to 24. That ye put off the concerning former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. God can change you. God can renew you, make you into a more godly person and a more righteous individual. And when people see that in you, it also starts to change. That's why a lot of things nowadays with the exposure of social media, a lot of people see not the light of God, especially with young kids. They think it's normal. That's the right thing to do. And I think that for the generation of me being a younger person, I have to show that responsibility. And that goes for everybody. People see, will see our kindliness and people will see God in us. And another one, um, actually we take a step back, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 to 19. that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge and to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. God gives us refuge from the world's problems, as I said earlier, with anxiety and other things that may worry us in this lifetime. And if we could lean on that, we could definitely alleviate that anxiety. It's not there anymore because God is there for us, not the things of here in this world, which is temporary. So in conclusion, is Jesus your anchor? Do you like your purpose? Maybe it's today that Jesus becomes your purpose. Thank you. Thank you for that.